Okay, now we get a Ven, uh, presentation by Ventura County Public Works on the Raptor program for the dam and levee protection. We've all been looking forward to this one. We've heard a lot about it. <laughs> okay. Good evening. I'm Carl Novak. I'm a deputy director with Ventura County Public Works a Watershed. And we have slides. There we go. Great. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's always exciting to talk about our little study that we did uh, over the last couple of years. And we have a Raptor program for dam and levee protection. It all started with a study we did that we asked our question, can raptors protect levees better than rodenticides? So what is a raptor? Well, if you were to ask, <laughs> if you ask a thousand kids, which I have actually done during Public Works Week, what a raptor is, they'll tell you it's a dinosaur. But actually, uh, the raptors that we're targeting with our study and our program are hawks and owls. And red-tailed hawks, the largest hawk in uh, Ventura County, and red-shouldered hawks, barn owls, and great horned owls. Those are the, those are the, the raptors that we're focusing on because they hunt and eat burrowing rodents. So burrowing rodents are a problem for us because we have 40 miles of levees, 56 earthen dams, and these are all great uh, habitats for ground squirrels and gophers. Ground squirrels can burrow up to 35 feet. They like to burrow horizontally. Uh, so a levee is a perfect location for a ground squirrel to set up its, its home, it, uh, particularly in the agricultural areas we have in Oxnard Plain. Uh, they have all their food sources on the plain. They can sit up, they can look for their predators uh, on top of the levee and they burrow horizontally and they can burrow right through that levee uh, or the top of a dam. Gophers, they can excavate up to a ton of soil per year each and they never stop digging. So it uh, starts with a burrow, it can end up with a void in the levee, and ultimately a failure. We haven't had a failure yet of levees, but they have had failures on the California aqueduct and around the country because of ground squirrels and burrowing rodents. And the solution so far in the past has been to use uh, rodenticide baits, and that's was common use uh, at Ventura County and throughout the country. Uh, but there's a lot of concerns about it, and back in 2005, our Board of Supervisors directed all our county agencies to minimize the use of any anticoagulant baits. So at Watershed, we immediately uh, restricted any use just to what we called critical facilities, dams and levees only. We have 150 miles of channels that we used to use rodenticides on. We eliminated that completely. So we restricted it only to 20% of our facilities back in 2005 and also started using less toxic um, rodenticides that we call them first generation. And uh, about two years ago, we uh, we, we redid our integrated pest management program. We looked at other options for pest control, and we talked to the folks at Santa Barbara, and they had been using raptor perches, and they thought they were working pretty well. They didn't really have any test data or anything, but we decided that we would start our test program and by installing raptor perches and comparing them with rodenticides. We, we established an advisory committee uh, with California regulators, uh, Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History, uh, uh, Cal State University Channel Islands and the Ohio Raptor Center all helped us put together our work plan because we wanted to have data that was defensible one way or another. We didn't really know what to expect going in. In fact, a lot of people told us the Raptor program would not work. And we started a pilot study and completed it in 2017. And again, comparing the extent of damage uh, with a, a levee reach that is uh, uh, protected only by Raptor perches with a similar levee reach that was only protected by bait stations. So on our 6,000 foot test site where we installed 14 raptor perches, a barn owl nest box, and one red tailed hawk nesting platform. And at the control site, 6,000 feet also, we just used the same rodenticide baits that we'd always been using. And then we started our study. First we went out and inspected the entire site, flagged every burrow we could find, and grouted them. So we had a baseline that was essentially clean for the whole site area. Uh, first indication of a, an issue with the, with the rodenticides is that we actually injected about 4,000 gallons of grout, which means there was a lot of holes there that we thought were being protected by bait, and there were, it was not being protected as well as we thought. Then we started our monitoring. We had a team go out uh, every week, and they looked for raptors and wildlife. They looked for the neighboring agricultural uses. They looked for new burrows because we'd already basically cleaned the site up, so every burrow we found was a new burrow that we could count. And then we also collected raptor pellets. So what's a raptor pellet? 
regurgitated clump of indigestible bones and fur that the raptors regurgitate. Uh, they're important because we found them. We found actually 107 of them near our perches. And we had our uh, expert from Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History analyze the bones. And about half of those were from owls and half were from hawks. It showed that the hawks and owls were coming to the perches. A lot of people ask us, well, where do you get your hawks and owls? Well, they're, they're local in the area, and the perches are designed to attract them to our levees so they can hunt. And then we found out that about half the bones uh, were ground squirrels and burrows in those pellets. So then we, so we knew that the raptors were coming to our site, and they were consuming our target rodents, ground squirrels, and uh, gophers. Uh, this histogram shows you a uh, comparison between the number of burrows we found, we observed in the raptor site versus the number of burrows we found in the control site during 2016. We observed 430 new burrows at the control site. During the same time period, we only observed 145 new burrows at the raptor site. So and you can see this a similar pattern in terms of when the burrows were observed throughout the year at both sites. Um, and that was a really good indication. We thought, well, maybe we're onto something here. Um, we're obviously seeing a lot less burrows at the raptor site. Uh, in this uh, sketch, basically, uh, this figure is kind of complicated, but all the red dots represent new burrows, the 430 burrows at the, raptor, at the control site and the 140 at the, at the test site. The one difference between the sites was that the, the neighboring agricultural uses was a little different. And that was a concern to us because at the control site, there were a lot of berries, and we know that Ground squirrels love berries, like everybody else likes berries. We rather eat berries than treated oats. And so we were concerned that that might skew the study results. So what we did during phase two of the program is that we replaced all of the base stations at the control site with perches. And then we monitored for another uh, seven or eight months. And then we could do a before and after comparison at the control site. And sure enough, we saw a 50% reduction in the number of new burrows again between 2016 when we had bait stations and 2017 when we put the perches up. So at that point we felt pretty convinced that the neighboring agricultural use uh, variable was eliminated and we could say that <coughs> the raptor perches were more effective during the study uh, than the bait stations. Well then the question was why? <laughs> why is it? We didn't really know what to expect. Why are these uh, the per simple perches that we're putting up working better than these bait stations which people have been relying on for years and years well, it turned out, and this is confirmed through other studies, that ground squirrels will prefer the neighboring crops over the treated oats during many times of the year, which basically leaves those levees unprotected because they, they're not consuming the bait, they're consuming the neighboring property, uh, crops and berries and, and green vegetables. Uh, but at the same time, they're also, they're also consuming some of the bait as well, but not to the extent that it's working as well as people thought it was going to work. In addition, it's very complicated to use rodenticide correctly. First, you have to observe the animal. Then you can put out clean bait. They have to consume that clean bait. Then you can put out the treated bait, the rodenticide itself. So that means that you're reactive in your program. The squirrels are already there. They're already burrowing. Then you can put your bait out. And so it, it's a, being a reactive program, you're always going to have damage. Whereas the, the raptors, We've got hawks hunting the day, owls hunting at night. You've got 24-7 coverage. And as we, the first slide showed, these, are, these have descended from velociraptors <laughs> and have become extremely effective hunters in what we've observed. Uh, so our conclusions, we observed 50% less ground squirrel burrows in areas where perches were installed than the bait stations. Bait was ineffective when adjacent to uh, more attractive crops. The raptor perches can replace anticoagulant bait, and we saw we estimate a savings of about $7,400 per levy mile just from the repair cost savings and the cost of contractors that have to go out every week to check their bait stations. And that facilities that are adjacent to natural areas that have these raptors would make good candidates for our raptor program. So to date, uh, we've actually expanded the study into a full program. We have 13 miles of channels and levees and 19 dams that are currently protected by 150 perches and 16 owl nesting boxes. And uh, the, the figure shows uh, the Boy Scout collaboration we did. It was a great project. They built 10 owl boxes for us, went out and helped help us put it up. It's, it's the, the community has really gotten behind this program in a lot of different ways, um, and it's, it's a really fun project working with them.
And uh, also very important is the grouting that we have to do because as, as I mentioned, we did a raptor test site. There were still 140 new burrows, so nothing is perfect. We have to go out, inspect, and grout those holes, and that's really the final um, solution, the combination of the purchase and the inspection and grouting. And we've got a lot of recognition um, from a diff some different groups, uh, a lot of uh, interest from around the country and even internationally now uh, of our study. Because I think we were actually the first study to compare, <laughs> yeah, and what the last thing a gopher sees <laughs> is a great horned owl. So that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. <laughs> Well, that was great. We've been waiting to see that one, and I think the gopher actually doesn't see the owl at nighttime. He just gets carried oh, that's right. away. <laughs> that's true. But um, no, that's I, I. One question that I have is because I actually have uh, owls and hawks on my property, and I have ground squirrels and a lot of gophers. I assume that you position these perches so that they have maximum, you know observation on the area that you want the raptors mm -hmm. to be hunting in. Yes. And sure. was the pole height about 20 feet, you said? Yes. I'm going to try Initially, my Initially, uh, during our previous integrated pest management uh, reports that we put, put together, the, some of our experts said, well, you can't, it's not going to work because gophers and ground squirrels have evolved to avoid raptors. And generally, that might be true in the environment. But when we take those perches and we put them right on the levees, all we're trying to protect is the levee. I mean, we're not trying to eradicate all ground squirrels and gophers. So we're just trying to keep them off our levees and dams. And I think by putting the perches there, that brings the, the hawks there, the owls there, they hunt, uh, and the ground squirrels are, they're just not, they're just not proliferating as they had been in the past at those locations. Very good. Do I have any other questions from the council members? Laura? Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, as a member of the uh, Southern California Association of Governments, um, SCAG's Environmental and Energy Committee, you came and presented. So I've talked about this presentation before at Council, and I'm so glad that you were able to come here, because I think it's fascinating, and especially with all the work that we're trying to do here. I think I remember you said that, and maybe I'm wrong, that the owls were even more effective than the raptors because it was at night and it was um, the it gave maybe the um, the gophers and everybody a false sense of security or am I incorrect <laughs> well, <laughs> or maybe I'm just gophers, personalizing uh, that or something the owls were very effective at hunting gophers and then the hawks more so were the ground squirrels in the daytime but we have actually found about the same number of pellets uh, so they were they were presumably hunting about equally based, based upon our, our, our analysis. But that's just one study in one place. So I'm not a hawk and owl expert. I'm actually a civil engineer. And now you, you never know what you're going to get into in public works. <laughs> well, I think what's interesting is that you. this was the first study that actually looked at the differences between using um, poisons and using our natural predators. Um, and it's so per pertinent to Malibu because I think Almost everybody in Malibu sees hawks and um, every day, all the time, and certainly um, hears the owls at night too. So thank you very, very much for coming out for this. Thank you, Jefferson. Thanks a lot. Uh, just to help people understand um, why there are two needs for the owls, the great horned owl will also attack and eat the barn owl, mm -hmm. and that's why we put the houses up. And uh, on my personal predator pole, I've noticed the scat down below. I've never analyzed it, but I have a 28-footer. And uh, it's constantly interesting to see what bone remnants are behind uh, my predator pole. I've been pushing for this at our parks, our flatland parks. And hopefully, we can get the council to agree that the predator poles are the way to go. It helps eradicate. Um, the, it helps keep that eradication effort going on the flat parks where we have that grass and the squirrels are easy prey for the hawks. So that's terrific. Also what the predator poles do is they provide a better hunting platform because they're not constantly having to adjust their eyes and focus while they're traveling. When they're sitting uh, standard stock, just sitting there, they can focus better and they're better predators. So those predator poles are real key. Also last thing, on Revlon, can is there any way you can move some of the poles and part of the analysis down Revlon toward the bridge uh, at PCH? Well, our intent is to cover, is to replace all base stations in the county 
uh, with polls. It's just that we're just doing it on a, a site by site basis based upon our, our, our staff and resources. But we're, we made a lot of progress. Um, we've only been doing it for about two quarters now. So. End of Revlon, you know, there's a lot of wild berry there and, uh -huh. and a lot of roadkill. So it would be nice to see if those predator poles came down that far. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for uh, bringing this and coming down here, down the coast, uh, to present. I think it's something that can kind of show, definitely shows us, you know, the reality that there's other options that are available to poison. I know there's many people that sometimes don't always see that, and I think that this is a, a clue into that. Um, I would ask the mayor and the council if we were to have an item back, um, you know, in the next couple months that could explore stalling raptor poles that have been discussed at times in all of the city's currently owned parks, especially near where there's recreation areas where we have challenges. I've heard from parks and recreation sometimes that there's challenges with the ground squirrels in the gophers. field space, gophers and stuff in the field space. So um, I would just make that recommendation and like to hear if we have consensus on that. Got consensus from me, anybody else? Yes. No, we, we've been trying, and we've been mentioning it. I, st I started on this when I was on council, first time, 08 to 12, I mentioned the predator poles, but a real uh, asset would be up at Trancus, at the Trancus Flat Park. And, and yeah, we I think it's share a great idea if we can do that. And, uh, it, and once again, it just proves that if you leave nature alone, it'll kind of solve the problem by itself. And Keanu's been talking to us about that for several years now. <laughs> And uh, is there a way we can use these on jaywalkers on the PCH? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we can share the uh, specs we have. We have something we've shared with the community on, this, on the polls and the owl boxes if you want that. That would be great, Carl. Thanks very much for being the catalyst for action. And can we get something, Reva? Thanks. All right, awesome. Mission okay. accomplished. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're on to written and oral communications from the public. I have a number of speakers here, so I'm going to call your name, and I'm going to call, you know, two or three names, so if you're, like, second or third up, get in the ready position and move closer to the front so we don't have to wait for you to come all the way up. First will be Keon Schulman, followed by Stephanie Rice and Georgina Bradley. Hello, um, I would like to, I'm representing Poison Free Malibu, and I'd like to give a presentation award of thank you uh, to the Ventura County Watershed Protection District. Our great mountain lion here wants to say thank you. You're great uh, for uh, your groundbreaking study demonstrating that raptors are more effective than poisons for controlling rodents and protecting the watershed. This invaluable example will promote wildlife friendly methods everywhere internationally around the world, and I can't thank you so very, very much. Thank you. 